Hey crafty friends, it's Joy here with another Lawn Fawn video. Today I created a cute little fun ocean scene using the Give It A Whirl die. So here is the die. These are the pieces, the components that you're going to need. You're going to need one of these large pieces. I will be using one of these little hillside pieces. You have your connector piece, your tab, and then you have two of these smaller pieces. But let's first start by coloring our images, our little ocean images here for our whole card. I am using the Seahorse and Around So Jelly ocean shelfie and then I will add some birds at the end from the smooth sailing stamp set. I'm using some Copic markers to color all of these cute little images and you can see which colors I'm using here. I wanted this little jellyfish to be a purple and turquoise color. I think that would that's a lot of fun. Almost maybe like it's changing colors. I mean I know that's really kind of what an octopus does but I think I think they are so cute and I just love this color combination. So we have a couple things of bubbles. We have a jellyfish, we have a rock, two things of seaweed, a little clamshell, a tiny fish and a seahorse. I think all of these guys are super cute because the scene inside of your give it a whirl is small. So I don't need a ton of images. This little fish will be orange and turquoise. And then we have our seahorse. I wanted that to be pink and purple. I did want it to be fairly colorful on with our images because there's a lot of blue and browns for the ocean and sand. And then we're gonna create a really fun background to put the give it a whirl die onto that's ocean themed as well. So I did want, or beach themed, excuse me. So I did want these little characters to be very, very colorful. This clamshell will be a pink and orange color. And then our two pieces of seaweed, seaweed will be just kind of this muted green color. And I will use coordinating dies for these images. So this is the background piece. So once you reveal, once you give it a whirl, this is the piece that's gonna show in the background. So this can have die cuts. Okay, I have a piece of white cardstock that measures five by five. We're gonna trim this down. And I am using the Give It A Whirl template. I'm lining it up at the bottom just for my own reference. Not that the, you could do it however you wanted to, but this just made it easy for me to know where to line it up in the future. Then I'm using a hillside stencil and I am creating the sand for our background image. So all the pieces that I'm doing right now is for our background piece to the Give It A World die. So this is the larger piece. I used some antique linen and gathered twigs to create the sand look. I'm going to use that stencil now as a mask because I want to create waves. So then I'm going to also use the ocean wave stencil. I'm lining up that template once more, just so I can have an idea of where I want my waves. I do know I want two waves, so I want to line those up nicely. I'm gonna tape this in place, just using some washi tape. And then I can come in with peacock feathers and create some waves here. Even though all of it's underwater, I did wanna create some water movement. You could just ink blend the top half blue because all the fish are underwater, but I really liked the movement of the waves. So I'm gonna add one more wave. So let me grab another one of those stencils, pop that in place, and then ink blend that again. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter so you can see the difference between the two waves. And then I'm just gonna lightly ink blend the top because when I die cut, it will be up. You will see that top part just a little bit. Then the little sand piece from, or the ground piece, the hill piece, whatever you want it to be, it's sand for me. From the Give It A Whirl die, I am ink blending that with the antique linen and gathered twigs. Now we can adhere our pieces together. So again, I'm lining up that stencil. You, this template, excuse me, not a stencil, the Give It A World template. You wanna line that up. Then you can put all of your pieces in. This is important because 
you don't want your pieces outside of this circle because when the front part is showing of the give it a whirl, it's a smaller circle, you don't want to see these images sticking out of the side. So this template shows you where you can put all of your images safely without them being seen. So just laying them out, deciding where I want some things to go. You do want to make sure everything is nice and adhered down great because you are going to have this moving piece that moves across these images. So you cannot use foam tape because your give it a whirl piece is going to go over top of this because this is kind of what gets revealed when you move that other piece behind it. So I've got these in place and look at that cute little scene. And I love that that little hill that we die cut from the give it a whirl. I did stencil the background taller than that because I wanted to have two levels. I'm adding some little detail with the gathered twigs ink and a little bit of water and a paintbrush. Okay, I'm using the inside piece of that template so I know exactly where to place my give it a whirl die. This is the larger circular die because I want to have an even edge around that circle. So this will let me see that it's nice and even. I can tape that in place. Then I will remove that template and then I can run this through my die cut machine. And then we're gonna have this open piece. So again, this is our back larger piece and we have our cute little scene. Let's do our front piece. I've die cut that from the piece of white cardstock. I showed you that at the beginning of the video, it already has the slit in it from die cutting it from that smaller circle. This was a tip that Kelly gave. You keep that circle taped in there from the first piece that we die cut. Then I can line up my stencil and this scene will be seamless. So when you twirl, when you give it a whirl from the front scene to the back scene, for the most part, that is going to be seamless. So the sand will be in the exact same place. I'm ink blending the same with antique linen and gathered twigs. And when I lined up this circle with the die, I made sure that the slit in that die lined up. Now I'm going to stamp my sentiment and I am stamping I want to bend it a little bit. I want it to go to the curve of the ocean ground, that sand piece. And I stamped it with black ink. It says, I see it's your birthday. This is from the seahorse and around stamp set. I'm stamping this cute little fish from the uh, ocean shelfie stamp set and then some bubbles. I'm going to stamp that fish one more time on a piece of low tack tape. So the whole thing is sticky. I want to create a mask because we need to ink blend the top of this for it to have waves as well. And I don't want to ink blend my fish. So I'm just cutting on the black line. And when you cut on the black line, it prevents you from having a white halo on your or around your image. I'm not worried about coloring over the bubbles because I'm going to use some blues anyways with my Copic markers. I am using that same ocean wave stencil. I am not worried about the waves matching up to the next scene because to me the water's moving so the waves being different makes sense. I did just want to make sure that my sand was lined up so doing that first step of making sure everything is where it needs to be works out perfectly for this kind of scene. I'm gonna color this fish that same orange and turquoise color, and the bubbles will be a turquoise and purple color. I just thought it'd be fun to have a little bit of different color. Even though it's under the water, I thought that would just be a fun, different look. So on this front piece, you don't put any die cuts on this. This has to be stamped directly to your background, so no die cuts whatsoever which is why I did the masking technique. I'm going to add some dots to the sand, again with that gathered twigs, a little bit of water, and a paintbrush. Okay, here we have our tab piece, or our connector piece. I'm folding that on the score line. I'm adding my tape runner, making sure there's tape over the whole piece. 
We're going to flip our front piece of the Give It A Whirl die over. This is the smaller circle. And I'm going to center that right in that bottom line where that slit is. I'm going to make sure that's nice and pressed down. And then I'm going to add a piece of scratch paper. I'm going to lift that piece up and add a piece of scratch paper inside because I have to add some tape runner here and I don't want to get it all over my whole background. I did get some. Make sure you rub all of that off. You don't want any adhesive anywhere else other than on that connector piece. So once all of that's cleaned off, then you're going to take that second die cut piece that has that connector, that same small circle. You're going to sandwich those two pieces together, making sure the slit is lined up and then press this down with a bone folder. Then we have our little tab. I'm going to add some adhesive on that bottom piece. That's a little bit curved. We're going to pull that flap on the right hand side and adhere that down. So that curve is going to follow the curve of your circle. Then we have this little piece that goes on our tab. I'm just going to ink blend that with the peacock feathers and add a little bit of liquid glue and it has an arrow on it. And once you adhere that to the tab, then your recipient will know which way to give it a whirl. So let's pop this in place here. That looks so cute. I love how this is turning out. Now we have our two pieces. We're going to flip them both over and we're going to take that tab and slide it through the back. And you just have to pull this through a couple times, work it through. I did mine probably three or four times and then it really wanted to spin around. So let's do that one more time, making sure everything's lined up. Now I can spin it back. It's stuck a little bit. So I, that I just had to figure out. And then there you go. Now you, it opens and closes. It gives, you give it a whirl. And I think it is so cute to reveal that background. Then you're going to add some foam adhesive on the back of that larger circle. Make sure it's not touching that smaller circle. You need room for that, for you when you spin it, for that circle in the back to move around. So I'm going to adhere that. Then we can put this aside and work on our A2 size part of our, card. So I am using, this is the tropical background dye. I'm going to ink blend most of this with the antique linen. I want this to have a sand look and then using the gathered twigs just to give it a little bit, give the, some of the areas a little bit of a darker look. Then we have our palm trees. I'm going to use gathered twigs for the trunk of the palm trees. And I'm using mowed lawn and rustic wilderness for the palm trees themselves. So the mowed lawn will be over the whole palm tree. And then I will just add the rustic wilderness right to the centers of the palm tree to give it a little bit of a two-toned look here. Then I want to stencil a background. This is going to have the... Oh, this is the Sunray background stencil. I love a good sunset, sunrise on the beach, and I love that look. So that's what we're going to go for here. I'm going to start with squeezed lemonade at the top and going down the sides. And then we'll, we will use some kitsch flamingo. And where they meet will give us a nice orange color. So I want to make sure that they overlap, the two colors overlap a good amount because I do want orange in the middle. So I'm just going to ink blend. And as you can see, that orange is kind of coming to life. And I want to make sure I'm going pretty dark on the rays here, because once we lift up the stencil, we're going to softly ink blend over the whole image. Let's use a little more of this squeeze lemonade to get more of that orange look. So now we don't want all of those white lines, or I don't anyway. So now I'm going to use the same colors and just lightly go over and blend that out and soften those lines. But again, that's why I did those stenciling darker because I still want to be able to see them. But when you're ink blending over, it definitely softens it. Let's adhere that tropical background dye to the front. I also used some coconuts from the hammock and trees dye. I die cut those and I ink blended those with the gathered twigs. 
Okay, now we have this background and we can put our tree stumps on here for our palm trees. I'm not going to adhere the palm tree fronds themselves yet. I'm gonna do that after we add the give it a whirl die to the center. So remember that has that foam adhesive behind it. I'm just deciding how I want my palm trees, if I want my palm trees behind it or kind of popped up over it. So we're gonna go with the popped up look because I love dimension. So I'm centering that right in the middle of that background. Then I'm gonna add some foam squares behind my palm tree fronds. And then we can put those in place. So I am gonna make sure they are tucked under that smaller circle because again, that's gonna be moving and we can't have stuff on top of it. And having these tucked under doesn't cause a problem. This small one, I did have to trim down a little bit just because I had the foam tape was in the way. And so that, because that small one is not popped up. I'll pop up this other big one. Let's put that in place. I trimmed that piece off, but later off camera, I did end up putting a full piece on because I kind of wasn't thinking that you're going to see that when you, when you <laughs> give it a whirl, you're going to see that palm tree is trimmed off. So don't trim off the big palm tree leaves. There's the coconuts. And I'm going to add a little bit of detail again to that sand on the tropical background dye itself around the palm trees, around the coconuts, just a little something extra. I like details like that. I think it's so super cute. Okay, let's give this a whirl. And then we have our cute little scene that reveals, I love this. And those birds on the top right are from the uh, Smooth Sailing stamp set. Thank you guys so very much for stopping by and watching. I hope that you enjoy this project and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.